Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers have been around nearly as long as airplanes. However, it wasn't until World War II that these massive ships became truly integral to the war effort. To support their immense capabilities, aircraft carriers require incredible amounts of fuel. In order to keep them at sea longer, the United States military began installing nuclear reactors aboard the ships instead of traditional diesel engines. The very first of these nuclear aircraft carriers was the USS Enterprise. Commissioned in 1961, the Enterprise was nearly 1,100 feet long. and weighed 93,284 long tons. Its eight Westinghouse A2W reactors gave it unlimited range and allowed it to reach speeds of up to 38 miles per hour. Since this era, every submarine and aircraft carrier in the United States fleet has been nuclear powered. Nuclear reactors are devices used to initiate and control a fission nuclear chain reaction. Through this reaction, they are able to generate steam pressure, which can be turned into marine propulsion. This is done by transferring heat to a working fluid, steam, that then feeds the ship's turbines. Though the reactors themselves vary in size, it takes entire sections of the massive ship to control and maintain the fission process. Maintaining this equipment generally falls to a machinist's mate nuclear, or MMN. These men and women are responsible for performing all the maintenance on the steam-powered propulsion plants aboard aircraft carriers and subs. It's not only a difficult job, but one that necessitates knowledge of chemistry, physics, engineering, and math. Steam propulsion requires lots of pressurized piping, and a big part of any MMN's job is maintaining these systems. They also have to deal with pipes filled with various fluids that contribute to energy transfer, such as water or oil. They must also test these various fluids to ensure there is no sediment or other materials that should not be there. It takes two years of in-class education to become an MMN, as nuclear reactor systems are extremely complex. As with most other military procedures, MMNs frequently run drills and trials to ensure their teams are ready for anything. Nuclear operations are considered extremely safe, but it takes hundreds of men and women to ensure this remains the case. Pressures and functions must be carefully watched to keep everyone on board safe at all times. The USS Enterprise, which served until 2012, was not only the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the U.S. fleet, but it is also considered the most complex. Modern Nimitz-class carriers have only two reactors, while the Enterprise has eight. Even the newest and largest class, the Gerald R. Ford, has just two reactors on board. 
the Enterprise, had multiple engine rooms, each requiring its own rotating team of technicians and engineers. In its more than 50-year service life, the Enterprise participated in several major operations. It was also refitted several times to keep the ship in service. It's difficult to overstate just how important machinists are to the operation of a nuclear vessel. Though steam has been used to power ships for hundreds of years, the complexity of the systems that power each turbine on an aircraft carrier can be very intimidating. The rooms themselves are mazes of equipment, dials, and pipes that would take even a well-trained individual years to navigate. And since these rooms are often located below the waterline, they are hot, humid, and often uncomfortable places to work. Nevertheless, it is essential that they be on hand 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most nuclear reactors have long core lives, and they only need to be refueled every 50 years or so. Nonetheless, aircraft carriers still need to carry thousands of gallons of fuel for both aircraft and on-deck vehicles. Fortunately, the U.S. military has found a way to refuel these carriers while they are at sea. During an underway replenishment, a supply tanker will pull up alongside the carrier and connect a series of cables from one deck to the other. Using these cables, they will transfer hoses that can then be used to pump fuel directly from one tank into another. They can also set up pulley systems to transfer a wide range of cargo and equipment. Most importantly, underway replenishment ensures the aircraft carrier being supplied can remain on the mission without having to return to port. While nuclear reactors allow the ships themselves to operate indefinitely, aircraft carrier crews still require food, supplies, and shore leave. These needs are generally fulfilled by returning to a friendly port somewhere in the world. However, large ships like aircraft carriers are unable to navigate shallow waters at slow speeds. As with any other traditional propeller-driven ship, the carrier's ability to turn is dependent on the water passing over the rudder. At slow speed, their massive rudders are practically useless. As a result, they must be guided into port by a series of tugboats. These powerful little vessels push, pull, and tow the carrier into position while navigating around potential obstacles. Given the thousands of tons of displacement associated with the largest aircraft carriers, waves and currents can very easily cause them to drift. In order to hold them in place, most aircraft carriers require two massive anchors. Each of these anchors weighs up to 30,000 pounds and has roughly 1,000 feet of anchor chain with 125-pound links. Operating and maintaining this heavy equipment requires a lot of training, 
as even a simple mistake can cause a ship to lose an anchor or suffer serious damage. In some cases, the entire length of the chain will be inspected by hand for corrosion, weakness, or other flaws. The typical modern aircraft carrier can have as many as 25 individual decks, each dedicated to one or more specialized purposes. As these vessels essentially act as fully contained floating military bases, they require almost every facility as their on-land counterparts. This includes weapons, magazines, where bombs, missiles, and other ordnance is assembled for use aboard the ship's aircraft. This is a highly detailed process that requires a lot of training. The teams of specialists assigned to this bomb farm know these weapons inside and out and use various heavy equipment to reduce the potential for accidents. Many aircraft carriers support crews of more than 5,000 people. These men and women all eat three meals a day while consuming a number of other perishable and non-perishable products. This produces a lot of waste that needs to be dealt with in the ship's waste room. This process is essential to the health of what is essentially a floating city. Here, crew members use specialized equipment to sort through up to 400 pounds of waste per hour. This includes collecting the trash and separating it into food waste, plastic, and metal. Soft plastics and hard plastics are put into a compressor that melts them down into pucks. These are stored and then transferred off the ship at the next available opportunity. There is also an incinerator room where paper, rags, and pulpables are heated up to 1,000 degrees Celsius, destroying them entirely. Metal and other such materials are recycled as often as possible, which can even be done on board some of the newer vessels. Though waste removal is essential due to the lack of space aboard a carrier, it also contributes to the health of the crew. Bacteria, mold, and other potential health hazards must be dealt with quickly and effectively to avoid outbreaks. Though it's easy to think of living on board an aircraft carrier as difficult, the U.S. military has incorporated several features into their newer models to make crew members more comfortable. These include a ship's store where they can buy snacks, toiletries, and other consumables. One vessel, the USS Carl Vinson, even set up a Starbucks chain where crew members can enjoy a delicious beverage before going about their duties. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.